child said, What is grass? Fetching it to me with full hands. How could I answer the child? I do not know what it is any more than he. I guess it must be the flag of my disposition, out of hopeful green stuff woven. Or I guess it is the handkerchief of the Lord, a scented gift in remembrance, sir, designedly dropped, bearing the owner's name some way in the corners that we may see and remark and say, who? Or I guess the grass is itself a child, a produced bay of the vegetation. Or I guess it is a uniform hieroglyphic, and it means sprouting alike in broad zones and narrow zones, growing among black folks as among white. Cannot, Tuka, old Congressman Co. I give them the same, I receive them the same. And now it seems to me the beautiful uncut hair of graves. Tenderly will I use you curling grass. It may be you transpire from the breasts of young men. It may be if I had known them, I would have loved them. It may be you are from old people, or from offspring taken soon out of their mother's lap. And here you are, the mother's lap. This grass is very dark to be from the white heads of old mothers, darker than the colorless beards of old men. Dark to come from under the faint red roofs of mouths. Who I perceive after all so many uttering tongues, and I perceive that they do not come from the roofs of mouths for nothing. I wish I could translate the hints about the dead young men and women, and the hints about old men and mothers, and the offspring taken too soon out of their laps. What do you think have become of the young and old men? What do you think have become of the women and children? They are alive and well somewhere. The smallest sprout shows that there is really no death. And if ever there was, it led forward life, and it does not wait at the end to arrest it, and ceased the moment life appeared. All goes onward and outward. Nothing collapses, and to die is different from what anyone supposed, and luckier. I believe a leaf of grass is no less than a journey work of the stars. I think I could turn and live with animals. They are so placid and self-contained. I stand and look at them long and long. They do not sweat and whine about their condition. They do not lie awake in the dark and weep for their sins. They do not make me sick discussing their duty to God. Not one is dissatisfied. Not one is demented with the mania of owning things. Not one kneels to another, nor to his kind that lived thousands of years ago. Not one is respectable or unhappy over the earth.